The first best part of the story felt like a drama more than a comedy drama, but they transitioned well to comedy towards the midpoint of the movie. By the time Kaigo met it in 26, he was making over 300,000 on any given Sunday from his church service. Hello, hi to our loyal South African, UK, US, Mozambique, Canada, and Germany viewers. If you are new, welcome to the tribe. This is episode number nine of What Are You Watching Lately? Today we are focusing on a South African comedy drama titled The Bad Bishop. There are only two ways to be rich. Either you become a politician, near a preacher. Be openly bad or pretend to be good. Before I tackle this one, I just want to say this is a must watch movie. You have to go watch it at the cinema because wow. Although I feel like the first hour was a bit less emotional than I wanted it to be, but the two hours, 30 minutes ran smoothly. I didn't even feel it. I felt like this is an, uh, an amazing movie. And you know that a movie is good when everyone in the cinema is in sync when it comes to reactions. Things like laughing, things like getting surprised, things like feeling like they want to interact with the film itself. I'm sure if there were comment sections in this movie, people would be commenting all the way. <laughs> The synopsis of the story is, a young man gifted in winning over crowds decides to start a church with a group of misfits. Their sole purpose is to get rich through fake miracles. Jesus said, once I feel the angels amongst us, I must tell his people that this will be a great year. The realism of starting something new, which is a church, was executed while showing the stages of them struggling to get members into their church. One thing I didn't get though is that they already had a building, a huge building, but there was no context to it. They didn't tell us how they got their building. I'm assuming they were hiring it. Maybe I'm reading too much into the story. And then they moved on to, you know, like uh, traditional rituals without context as well. You just see this guy away somewhere doing a ritual so this in a way depends on the audience knowing the stories of fake pastors in south africa so if you don't know any stories about fake pastors in south africa you don't understand what is a ritual you don't understand why that is happening why you understand so it opens gaps for confusion or gaps for jumping into conclusions and that is never good with a movie but yeah. Otherwise, the story went well. This record can kill your cancer. The whole story is centered around betrayal and power. That's why there's a lot of power struggle throughout the story. And that was executed well because you see it over and over with good plots that have plot twists in between. And then they brought in the love interest. I love it when they bring a, a love interest into the space of the main character instead of the main character going out of his way to find her. Obviously, he still has to make a way to talk to her or to uh, lure her over, win her over. But she's brought into the church as a member and she's just there and he gets stuck hair in slow motion. That was a cool one. And the love interest's uh, character was amazing. It made him human again. Like we got to see him as a human being, him at a relaxed space and him at a vulnerable state. And that brings us to the things that I like and dislike about the movie. First things first, I like how the plots were put together. They supported each other as they ran through on the sides to one place where they were going to meet. And you had a lot of plot, plot twists in between. So just when you think everything is going well, there's a plot twist. Just when you think that everything is going his way, something is thrown his way as well. So that was amazing. I feel like, yeah, they did well with that one. That was on point, you know? And then they moved on to 
Another thing that they did so well after the main triggering event or the call to adventure where he decides to start a church, he has to gather a group of people that he's going to work with. They introduce the group of people in an amazing way with a voiceover and showing them and then freeze framing their picture or making it slow motion as they are speaking about this character. And I feel like that was done amazing. All they needed was graphics to seal it, more especially for the people who, are, who have hearing impair, impairment, you know, people who can't hear anything that's being said. They're just seeing this person's face. Put graphics in there, put titles of what the person's name is, what his characters are, or his superpowers. That would have sealed it so amazing. I feel like, yeah. The kid is so good, so good. I like the whole story itself, how it's packed and all that but the character development of the other characters like you know characters that are either enemies of the main character or people who are against him were not really done well more especially when it comes to rose the cop and chippy was uh, business partners those just appeared out of nowhere we were never warned there was no uh introduction maybe giving us plans that Chipiwa has business partners from the get-go and then show us Rose and say what what makes her who she is why is she against these pastors um, creating these churches and stuff what is it that happened to her or happened in her life in her circles because they had a chance they already did that thing of introducing the main characters or the main the group of main uh, allies as one by one with the voice and the slow motion why not do that with each character that comes in that's important to the story that's important to the plot bring them in and just say this is Banbani this is what is happening this is who they are this is what makes them tick this you understand like keep up what you started because why are you letting it go now when there's new people coming in because Sometimes some people might get confused with that. Another thing that most South African movies get wrong is when they do things like crowds, you know? Even when you're watching um, America's Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent, Sometimes you see this crowd, right? You see everything that they are cheering about and then they show this person in a close-up. You only hear that person or whatever they are saying. And that's like isolating that person's point of view. If you are going closer to a person's face, then isolate everyone's voices and leave their voice chanting. Because everyone is just saying too much in that uh, in the strike. There's like a strike there, and now we don't know what's going on. If not, then you take a person out, you take them out of the group, you see the group in the background, and you are talking to them in a news report. Usually they do this in news. So if there's a news report, uh, someone takes one person, they pull them to the side to talk about the story. And you can also do it with the person who reports the news standing far, just saying, this is what is happening today. They just found this and this and this. It just established the, the strike itself. It gives it more power, more emotion. You start feeling like, ooh, ee. It's, it was going to shake us a bit because uh, that strike shaked us because we know what strikes or protests are like. But eh, if you were to add that element, it will make it more... Another thing that I feel like they missed out on is telling the story backwards. Because this is a criminal story or a story about uh, people doing mischievous things or acting out of character. It's always good to take them to the end and then tell their story backwards. More especially since this one uh, needed more voiceover and they had chapters in between. I know they had a few uh, problems with the fact that the film was not completed. They didn't shoot the whole thing. But if they were to do that as a backward story, it would have worked well. They wouldn't need the chapters. The chapters worked well as well. They give you context to the story. I'm not gonna fight that. But I feel like that would seal it more. It would give it more emotional, emotion. <laughs> 
Like I write in kappa in or let's have it. The film publication board gave it a 16 with D L P V, which is drug use, strong language, prejudice, and violence. If it were up to me, I would also give it a nudity rating because well, there's a bit of nudity there and there, you know, like half naked people, bikini people, and all these other things. So I uh, I'm gonna give it that and the running time of the movie is 150 minutes which is 2 hours 30 minutes that's it from me with the review today I hope you got everything you needed to know about the movie and I didn't give you any spoilers because yo I talked a lot because I love the movie and it's a South African movie so we have to give each other pointers there and there you know so that everyone knows what they should be doing i'm not saying i know everything but i understand movies enough to say what works what doesn't work um yeah please remember to tell me what are you watching lately until next time yes, I, I i see money i, I see miracle money yeah!